Greetings, travelers. It is time for me to make a guide for the easiest job in Final Fantasy XIV. Unfortunately, I already made a samurai guide for Endwalker, so we're going to take a look at Summoner instead. In the long forgotten era of about seven months ago, there was a different expansion for Final Fantasy XIV. In this long forgotten age, Summoner was the hardest job to play in the entire game and required two PhDs in both applied mathematics and data science, a very large brain, and a dedication to filtering information out of tenured professors who don't explain anything in an easy to understand manner. In Endwalker, Summoner now requires you to do absolutely nothing whatsoever. You can just stand there AFK and the job will play itself. All thanks to removing the hardest part of anything in a video game, the dots. None of those previous statements are true, by the way, and the actual answer is somewhere in the middle. Although if you were scared off by everyone gatekeeping Old Summoner by insisting it was the hardest job in the world to play at a mediocre level, and it somehow made sense intuitively while leveling it, do not fear, as New Summoner is by far one of the most straightforward jobs to play in all of Final Fantasy XIV. With my long-winded and useless intro out of the way, I can easily swear again. You wanna learn how to play fucking summoner? I'ma teach you motherfucking bitch ass. Easiest shit in the 6.0, 6.1, fuck it, I don't give a fuck. Summon Carbuncle. You can't summon Bahamut without it. Precast Ruin 3 about one and a half seconds before combat. Immediately Bahamut. Late Weave Searing Light. You can use something like Lucid Dreaming for your first Weave slot if you want to make it consistent. Then press Astral Impulse. Take some Meth if you want to use it. Astral Impulse. Then Astral Fell Cleave again. Double Weave both Energy Drain and Ockmorn. Astral Spam. Double Weave Death Flare and Fester. Mash the GCD again and Fester. And finally we get our sixth Blood Spiller. And with that we're Pass the opener and we're in filler. Now that you're in filler, you have three choices, but all of that is an illusion. Garuda is your best filler summon for maximum DPS at level 90 with good raid buffs that last long enough and an immediate swift cast slipstream. You can gain a whole six potency with this insane swift cast technique and also throw away your swift cast raise potential. Alternatively, you can Titan immediately after Bahamut for slightly better, different gameplay experiences with less raid buffs. What is it that you do during Garuda? Well, you slipstream once and then you count to four. For Titan, you count to four but weave something in between. And now for Ifrit, well, you gotta do two big, hard casted spells and two melee combo buttons. That's it. The primal order doesn't actually matter regardless of what someone will tell you, including myself. You will still have a little time though before you can summon Phoenix, so make sure to use a Ruin 4 at some point in filler, and even a Ruin 3. The only thing you want to make sure is that all your hard casted spells are timed to a point when you don't need to move for a mechanic for maximum uptime and maximum normal damage. Now at the legendary one minute part of your life cycle, we get to eat fried chicken. Phoenix comes with a free regen for your party and also gives you life flare instead of death flare. If you aren't paying attention, you might forget to give that single target regen to your tank or someone who can actually use it. Otherwise, it's Bahamut, but Oranger. Don't forget to energy drain and fester because I like to forget that one. Then it's back to filler before going back to Bahamut, but with searing light this time. Congratulations, or as they say in glorious Nippon, that is your 36 hour life cycle. As for utility, you're going to need to press Lucid Dreaming to not run out of mana at some point. You also have a free personal shield for fun and games whenever you want it. Just not when you're in the middle of summoning something big and cool. It is not a barely conditional mana ward with a charge system, I swear. Saving swift cast for raise is a cool thing to do when learning fights. It's also a cool thing to do when re-clearing fights in case someone makes a mistake. Or you can save swift cast just because you really wanted the hard cast slipstream to feel alive. Use Using Swiftcast for DPS is lame and virgin behavior, just like how setting your summon size smaller and not having your effects turned on is for cowards. Physic also isn't a real button.
You might think I didn't mention AoE, and that is because Summoner quite literally just has buttons that are one-to-one -one replacements for single target skills, but for AoE instead, it's all a gain on three because this isn't the art of war. Things like Akmorn, Death Flare, and Ruin 4, for example, already do additional cleave even if you didn't know that. Lastly, thanks to spell speed, you might be further into your rotation compared to when you use Searing Light in your opener. Is it better to delay your rotation slightly to line up your large demi summons with raid buffs, or is it better to just keep doing the rotation regardless of where the raid buffs are landing? The correct answer is, it depends on the encounter and kill time optimization, but that's some hardcore nerd shit that this guide is not going to help you with. Anyways, this was Summoner back in previous expansion. And this is Summoner in Endwalker. In other words, it's the job with stand power. Just remember to keep that GCD rolling because it doesn't matter how easy the job is, it's not going to make up for you not doing damage 53% of the time. Now let's get out there and stare at some mountain busters. This is the generic end slate where I force you to watch more of my YouTube videos to help boost my metrics in the algorithm. Thank you for your time.